Hello and welcome back. I hope you're doing well. In this episode, we will learn about how a switch statement works in Java. Let's get into it. Don't forget this channel have a dedicated Discord server. It's a place where you can talk about the episodes and tutorials of this channel. Maybe you wonder something about the last episode that was a bit unclear. Or maybe you just want to say hello. And for those who wish to go the extra mile to support the channel, there's a link to my Buy Me A Coffee page. And also, there's a membership option here on YouTube. Thank you. Last episode, we learned about how if, else if, and else works in Java. So I think it's fitting that we learn about switch statements right after. They are somewhat similar. Here's an example of a switch statement. We have here a variable that I named a number. I gave it the value of 15. Here is the switch statement. And when you add a switch statement, you start out with switch parentheses and between that is the value that you're trying to check and then you have the code bracket where you're going to do all the different checks and here it's called case and not if it is something so we do the switch and inside here we have the word case it's it's similar to if so if it's one then we add two dots after that and then we execute whatever code comes after and we're going to keep executing code downward till we reach a break. We are going to execute this line of code even though the case was 1, because we keep going down. For the case 1, we didn't have anything specific if a number was 1, but there was no break after that, there was no stop here, so we keep going down. And here we have apple pie that we print out, and then we have a break. And then we'll leave the switch statement. So if we change a number to one, we're going to see apple pie. And if I change the value to two, we also see apple pie. And we have an example down here. In case it's eight, we're gonna print out carrots and then we're gonna print out blueberries. So let's change this to eight carrots and then blueberries. But if we move it to 15, or give it the value 15, we're only printing out blueberries. And then we hit the break, and then we're out. This opens up the door to execute the same line of code given different type of answers. So let's take this example in an if statement right below here. So if a number is equal to 8, or a number is equal to 15 we print out blueberries because that's if it's 8 we print out carrots and blueberries and if it's 15 or in case it's 15 we print out blueberries so 8 and 15 will print out blueberries but only 8 will print out a carrot or carrots then we add another check here if a number is equal to 8 then we print out carrots too. But here we're checking for 8, here we're checking for 8. It's redundant. This is only an example of two checks. What if we add case 16 and then we print out ice cream? Now we need to check for a number is equal to 8 or 15 or a number is equal to 16 we won't print out blueberries, but we will print out ice cream, because ice cream will be common for all of them. Then for 8, uh, or a number is equal to 15, we print out, well, blueberries. Because if it's 8, we're going to print out blueberries, and if it's 15, we're going to print out blueberries. But we're only going to print out carrots if it's 8. So if a number is equal to 8 we print out carrots. As you can see, this is gonna get very messy very quickly. So that's where a switch statement comes in handy. So yeah, a switch is quite powerful. It allows you to execute and check for statements, pretty much the same as a if statement, but it also allows you to execute more than just one type of code even if that was not specifically for that case. So if our case was 8, 
then we print out this line of code, that line of code, and also that line of code. But if we only had 16, or the value was 16, then we would only execute that line of code. And this is just an example. You can use it in more ways, of course, but this is the very basic one. And I'm just showing here that we can use brackets or we can skip brackets. And if we need to execute more line of codes in number four, then we just add them. So in case there's four, we'll run this. We have potato, 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 potato. And even though I have them in order, one, two, four, eight, 15, 16, you don't have to. So for example, I can switch 16 with eight. We would then execute the same line of code for eight as 15 and 16. So if we got 16, we would execute this line of code, that line of code, and that line of code. So yeah, you don't need to keep them in order. And you can only check for a case once. So if I add 16 here, we would get an error because I'm already checking for 16 here and it says a duplicate case. So, so only check for one value once and then type out the code execution that you want for that case. And if you have a number that's not matching any of these cases, let's say 40, we are not doing anything in case there's 40, Let's see what happened. Then we get something else, which is this line of code right here. And default is pretty much the same as else, but you are not restricted to keep default at the bottom, even though you probably should for simplicity and easier to read. We can put a break here. We can move, let's remove break. Uh, we can take default and put it at 4 or well, under 4 before 4 doesn't really matter Then let's take that one and then put that one there. So now Number is 40. We run this again Something else potato 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 So we entered this case and printed out all of this and if I have number 4 Well, we get the same result because there is no break after four and then it just goes down to the next bracket, which is in here. And then we have a break and we're done. But I recommend keeping default at the bottom. It makes it much easier to read and know what's going on. And if you want, you can put a break here as well. And before I end this episode, I want to say two things. One. Checking numbers like this is not usually the use case for a switch statement. I usually use switch statements for checking game states. Because I make games, so I check get different game states and then execute different type of code, depending on that. So if the game state currently is options, or I'm in the options menu, then I execute the code for the options menu. Then maybe I'll be playing the game, I execute the code for the playing game state. And if I'm in the ma main menu, I execute the code for the menu and so on. That's usually what I use a switch statement for. But when you do code, you're going to find out that hmm, a switch statement might work better here instead of a if statement. It all comes out to trying for yourself and see what works best. And the second thing I want to say about switch statements is that since Java 14, I think, you can write switches in a cleaner way than the way I write it here. It doesn't really change much how it works a little bit, but this is the basic version of switches. And by using Lambda expressions, I hope I pronounced that correct, we can write it a bit different. But I'm gonna stick with this one for now. And then later down in our tutorial, we can talk about the advanced, if you will, switches, which is using Lambda expressions. So just know that there is a different way of writing switches, but this one works for now. We're going to get into the more advanced later. So thank you guys for watching. I hope that you learned something today. And if you did, smash that like button and hit subscribe. And hope to see you in the next episode as well. Take care now. Bye.